Good morning, friends, and a warm welcome to each one of you. Today, we reflect on the theme, Mary, Comforter of the Afflicted. Mary, our mother, is called the Comforter of the Afflicted because of her motherly care and concern for everyone. She consoles those who are suffering, those who are mourning, those in pain. She embraces everyone with her loving arms. A mother truly understands her children. She will never fail us. Let us all be devoted to her as she is the queen, the entrance to the kingdom of God. Let's find time every day to pray to her and her son Jesus. Let's keep our faith alive. Let's pray for all those who are troubled and worried due to poverty, unemployment, sickness, grief, and pain. May our mother comfort them and bless them and their troubled lives. Let us place all these intentions at this Eucharist and may they be fulfilled according to God's holy will. Now, as we welcome our celebrant, we shall sing hymn number six on page four, hymn number six every morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear children, beloved devotees of Our Lady of Good Health, Velankani, good morning everyone. And welcome to this beautiful Eucharistic celebration on the eighth day of our Novena to Our Lady of Good Health. As we are reflecting on the theme, Mary as the mother of comforts, as the one who comforts us in our afflictions. I invite all of us to bring to Our Lady and surrender at her feet our aches, our pains, our sufferings, our turmoils, and pray, Mary our mother, the mother of comfort, bring us God's comfort and consolation and help us to move onwards in our faith journey. In order that we may take part in this Mass in a worthy manner, may we now take a few moments to remain in silence, acknowledge our unworthiness and failures, and ask the Lord for the gifts of pardon, love, and peace.
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please join us as we sing, Lord, have mercy on your people. Lord, have mercy on your people gathered here. Christ, have mercy on your people gathered here. Gloria, please take page 8, hymn number 18. Glory, we sing to God on high. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in the unfailing health of mind and body, and through the generous intercession of Blessed Mary, our Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. First chapter, verses 3 to 7. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the merciful Father, the God from whom all help comes. He helps us in all our troubles so that we are able to help others who have all kinds of troubles using the same help that we ourselves have received from God. Just as we share in Christ's many sufferings, so also through Christ we share in God's great help. If we suffer, it is for your help and salvation. If we are helped, then you too are helped and given the strength to endure with patience the same sufferings that we also endure. So our hope in you is never shaken. We know that just as you share 
in our sufferings, you also share in the help we receive. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. For response, we shall sing hymn number 25 on page 11. Hymn number 25, Glorify the Lord. rise for the gospel as we sing alleluia According to Saint Matthew, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus saw the crowds and went up the hill where he sat down. His disciples gathered round him, and he began to teach them. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble, they will receive what God has promised. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are those who are merciful to others, God will be merciful to them. Happy are pure in heart, they will see God. Happy are those who work for peace, God will call them his children. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do not what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are who when people insult you and persecute you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. Be happy and glad for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. This is how the prophets who lived before you were persecuted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters and dearly beloved devotees of Our Lady of Good Health, Velankani, 
Today, as we are on the eighth day of Navina in the run-up to the celebration of the great feast of the Nativity of our Blessed Mother, the theme for our reflection today is uh, Mary, the Comforter of our Afflictions. Mary, the Comforter, the Comforter. Uh, there is a famous uh, story by the Russian author Anton Chekhov. The title of the story is The Lament. Some of you might have read it. It is even prescribed for students in the English lessons in the higher secondary level. It's a simple story about an old man, an old man who owns a horse and a cart and um, runs it in the city for customers. And according to the story, the old man's son dies suddenly, leaving him in great pain and anguish. The man is unconsolable. The day after burying his only son, the old man goes to the city square, uh, to, goes back to his work with his horse and the cart, and as he waits for the customers, he desperately wants to tell someone about his loss. You know? He wants to share his tragic story about the death of his son with somebody. The first customer was a wealthy businessman, and as he steps into the carriage, the old man begins, Sir, my son, my son, let me tell you something about my son. But the businessman was not interested in listening to the tragic story of the old man. He says, sorry, sorry, do not disturb me. I have got so many other things in mind. The next customer was a university student who wants to be driven to the other side of the city. And as he steps into the carriage, the old man begins again, my dear young man, my son, my son, let me tell you something about my young son. But the student also was not interested in listening to the story. In the same way, the old man had about 10 customers that day, but no one of them, no one of them showed any inclination whatsoever to listen to the story of the old man. At the end of the day, the old man and his horse return to the stable. They are alone in the stable. And as they both prepare to go to bed, the old man begins to tell his horse, dear horse, listen to me. My son, my son, let me tell you something about my son. And Ante Chekhov ends the story by saying, of all the people, it was only the horse that listened to the old man's tragic story with all its attention. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today we are reflecting on the theme of Mary as a comforter in the gospel passage that we just listened to. In the very second beatitude, Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn and weep, for they will be comforted. Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. God is our ultimate comforter. God is our ultimate comforter. Tragedies strike human beings in innumerable ways. We know from our own life experience how many times, how many times have we encountered tragedies that we never expected. We are there sitting outside uh, a doctor's office and the doctor comes out with a pained face and delivers a shocking news about a very serious uh, medical diagnosis. A policeman knocks on the door and delivers the news that no parent ever wants to hear. Someone who promised never to leave walks out of, on a relationship that we hold so dear to our heart. A letter of rejection crushes all the hopes of a future tragedy, pain, ache. They are there everywhere, everywhere. They are part and parcel of human experience. They are an indispensable element of human uh, existence. There is no physical way to escape it. No, we cannot run away from that. But as believers, as believers, as people who believe in the risen Lord, the good news that our faith offers is that in all these sufferings, in all these turmoils, in all these disappointments, we are not alone. We are not alone. We do not have to endure the sufferings all by ourselves because, because we have a God who is the father of compassion, who is the father of mercies, who comforts us in our afflictions. Read the Bible. There are so many beautiful passages, so many references, so many verses that reveal to us the God as the comforter par excellence, comforter par excellence. 
Isaiah chapter 40 is a beautiful small chapter. When you go home and you have time, take the Bible and read this short chapter, beautifully written, Isaiah chapter 40. The context is this. The people of Israel are in, um, are in the country of Babylon in captivity. They are there as slaves. They are there suffering so much. They are in great pain. But they also knew that they have failed God in a big way. They have been unfaithful to God, which was primarily the reason why they were in captivity in the first place. But, but the one big question that loomed large in the minds of the people was that whether they will have a future at all. Will we ever be saved? Will we ever go back to our land? Will we ever see Jerusalem? That was the question looming large in their minds. At this juncture, at this situation of despair and hopelessness, the word of God reaches out to them, offering them hope and comfort. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 2, beautifully says, Comfort my people, comfort, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her heart service has been completed, that her sins have been paid for, that her sins have been paid for. Comfort, my people, comfort. How consoling those words are. Psalm 23, the famous psalm that many of you might know by heart. In it, King David, even though King David acknowledges the dark moments of life, you know, the precariousness of human existence, the dark valleys and alleys that one has to necessarily pass through in human life. The psalmist is still joyful. He is in an upbeat mood because he knows deep down, he knows in his faith that he has the shepherd by his side. Psalm 23 verse 4 beautifully says, Even though I will have to walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil because you are with me, my Lord, and your staff and rod will comfort me. St. Paul in the New Testament, in his epistles, testifies time and again, time and again, to this beautiful faithfulness of God, to this comforting presence of God. Paul, as we know, if you have read his history, if you have read his epistles, any one of them, we know that he was no stranger to hardship. He was a man who suffered immensely during his uh, missionary journeys. He suffered a lot. He suffered a lot. He was no stranger to human suffering. In fact, in the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, Paul gives us a long list of the many sufferings that he underwent in his life for the sake of Christ. He says, five times I have received 40 lashes from the Jews. Three times I have, be I have been beaten with rods. One time I have been pelted with stones. I have toiled, I have labored, I have gone without sleep. I have known hunger, I have known thirst, I have gone without food. I have been cold, I have been naked. The list goes on and on and on. He suffered immensely. The kind of suffering that would have broken anyone else. But Paul hung on. He hung on there bravely. He did not run away. He was not desperate because like King David, like the people of Israel, he knew deep down in his heart that he was not alone, that he had a God who will comfort him. In fact, in the first reading today that we heard, uh, the letter to the Corinthians, second letter, chapter 2, beautifully St. Paul says, Blessed be God, the Father of Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies, the Father of all com compassion, who comforts us in our afflictions, who comforts us in our afflictions. God is the comforter par excellence, comforter. This comforting quality of God found, uh, found uh, concrete expression in Mary, our blessed mother. That is what we celebrate today. Mary, the mother of comforts. Of all the people, of all the people in the world, in the entire humanity history, Mary alone had the singular privilege of comforting God himself. We know that. We know that from the history. On Mount Calvary, as Jesus hung on the cross, oscillating between life and death, Mary stood by her son like a solid rock, a formidable presence of strength and hope, encouraging his son, comforting son, go on, go on, you could do it, go ahead and accomplish your redemptive mission. Mary comforted God himself. 
And we know that Mary can be our best comfort too because she has gone through all imaginable sufferings that we go through today. There is nothing that Mary did not experience. No? Mary knows what it is to feel lonely. Mary knows what it is to run away from home. Mary knows what it is to uh, feel falsely accused and insulted. Mary knows what it is to feel abandoned. And Mary knows what it is to lose a son, to feel orphaned. She knows, she knows. Her sufferings are real. She has understood human sufferings in a real, real way, which in turn makes her comfort, makes her consolation very real and authentic. And which is the reason we say in the beautiful prayer of Hail Holy Queen, no, Hail Holy Queen, Salve Regina, the prayer that we say at the end of the rosary. What do we say there, Mary? To you do we cry, we the poor banished children of Eve, to you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. May Mary, our blessed mother, our lady of good health, Velankani, the mother of comfort, bring us God's comfort and consolation to our sufferings. And may she help us with her intercession to move onward in our faith journey towards heavenly Jerusalem. May God bless all of us. Amen. For a tree, we shall sing, Father, take the gifts we bring, hymn number 39 on page 15, hymn number 39. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your son, no petition may go unanswered. No request be made in vain through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of the saints. And especially we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo thankful him of praise. For truly even the earth's ends, 
You have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the loneliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her art of salvation, your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exaltation praise as we acclaim. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, O Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together, Pope Francis, very reverend father, El Sagaraj, our diocesan administrator, most reverend Dr. Devdas Ambrose, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We praise you at this moment. We, the people of our mother, Our Lady of Velangani, have gathered here to thank the Lord, to praise the Lord for all the wonders, for all the miracles, for all the signs, the good things that we have received abundantly from the loving hands of our dear God. At this juncture, we also put forth all our petitions, all our prayers, intentions with which we have come here to this Mass. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the Father and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a meaningful sign of peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the God of comfort, whose consolation found a tangible expression in our Blessed Mother. Happy are you who are called to his banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. That we say the Gavani Kavam, Ipo the Vanga Podam Divina Power Saint and Saydu, Tangali, the Yari to condemn Catholic Christ, the Vulcan Matame, Valanga Padum, Navin Il Matame, Divin Akurne, Valanga Padum, Divin Akurne, Vanga Varinda Bodum, Davis Sidum, Ludamil Patrama, Path to Kulungal. Your attention, please. Only Catholics who are themselves worthy of receiving Holy Communion by making proper confession might come forward to receive the Holy Communion. Holy Communion will be given in tongue. Please take care of your belongings when you come to receive the Holy Communion. For communion, we shall sing hymn number 46 on page 17. Hymn number 46, listen. to this 
Loving Father, thank you for gifting us your mother to us who comforts us always. Thank you for embracing us as your loving children. Thank you for loving us every day. Help us understand your love so that we may be guided to spread your love around us. Strengthen and empower us to answer your call giving praise and honor to you and your holy name. Help us to let go of our pride, our ego and our selfishness that holds us back from you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. And now, in joy and thanksgiving, we shall sing hymn number 56 on page 21, hymn number 56 in moments like these. Sing out a love song to Jesus. 
Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience his continued increase for our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Today, we pray the Rosary for all the people who offer their service for the poor and the needy. May our Blessed Mother always enrich them with love and compassion. We pray for our Holy Father, bishops, priests, religious and nuns, working in the Lord's vineyard, leading all in faith, not forgetting our sick and aged priests and religious. May our Blessed Mother intercede for them and always keep them in good health. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, God pray for us sinners now and now the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our all glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, now and so shall be world without end. Amen. Novena, <coughs> Novena to Our Lady of Health, Velangani. Dear Pilgrims, let us take the page number 54 in the old book, and in the new book, 57. O Most, Most Holy, Holy Virgin, Virgin. You, you were chosen by the most adorable Trinity from all eternity to be the most pure Mother of Jesus. Permit me, your humble and devoted kind, to remind you of the joy you received at the instance of the most sacred incarnation of our Divine Lord. And during the nine months you carried him in your chaste womb, I wish most sincerely that I could renew or even increase that joy by the, the fervor of my prayers. O tender, tender mother of the afflicted, grant me in my present necessities that special protection you have promised to those who devoutly commemorate this ineffable joy, relying on the infinite mercies of your divine Son, trusting that those who ask should receive, and penetrated with confidence in your powerful prayers, I most humbly entreat you to intercede for me I beg you to obtain for me the favors and in this novena, if it be the holy will of God to grant them, and if not to ask for me whatever graces I most stand in need of. Let us put forth all our intentions, prayers, and petitions at this moment to our Mother, Our Lady of Velangani. I desire by, by this, this novena, novena which, which I now offer in your honor, honor to prove the lively confidence I have in your intercession. Accept it, I beseech you, in honor of that supernatural love and joy with which your naked heart replenished during the abode of your divine Son in your womb, in veneration of which I offer you the sentiments of my heart. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mother of God, accept these salutations in union with the respect and veneration with which the angel Gabriel first hailed you, full of grace. I wish most sincerely that there may become so many gems in the crown of your celestial glory which will increase in brightness to the end of the world. I beseech you, O comforters of the afflicted, by the joy you received when the Word was made flesh, to obtain for me the favors and graces which I have now implored to your powerful intercession. For this end, I offer you all the good works which have ever been performed in your honor. I most humbly entreat you for the love of the amiable heart of Jesus, with which yours was ever so inflamed, to hear my humble prayers and obtain my request. Amen. On the eighth day of Novena, let's take the page number 72 in the old book and in the new book, page number 97. Hail, Holy, Holy Temple, Temple of God, God and seat of wisdom, the Ark of the Covenant was made of cedar and covered with gold. God has adorned you with all graces and immortality. Virgin Mother, conceived without original sin, pray for us, your poor children, that we may also assume our glorious body at the time of our resurrection. Make eternal light and lighten our darkened ways, so that we may wake up and reach safely our destination. We are your children, entrusted to your motherly care by your divine Son, while he was on the cross. Our dearest Mother, protect us, obtain for us all that we need for our soul, and preserve us all in good health. Amen. For the litany of Our Lady of Good Health, let us take the page number in the old book, 57, and in the new book, 82. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, Mother of hell, pray for us. Our Lady of hell, predestined by God even before the creation of the world. Pray for us. Our Lady of Health made known to the angels as soon as they were created. Pray for us. 
our lady of health revealed to adam in the garden of eden pray for, pray for us. us our lady of health the morning star foretold by the prophets pray for us our lady of health the cloud that brings rain to the world pray for us our lady of health the vessel of goodness pray for us our lady of health called holy before your birth by the patriarchs pray for us our lady of health conceived without original sin pray for us our lady of health who crushed the head of satan pray for us our lady of health born and the highest family among the descendants of the 16 kings that ruled israel pray for us our lady of health the child of the holy jochim and ann pray for us our lady of health the fruit of their prayers and their good works pray for us our lady of health adorned with more brightness than all the angels and saints pray for us our lady of good health who came into the world into the with the greatest piety pray for pray us for our lady of health who touch of divine grace pray, pray for us our lady of health who had been favored with the divine consolation in addition to the divine grace pray, pray for, for us. us our lady of health more righteousness than all the saints pray, pray for, for us our lady of health who at birth was gifted with a heavenly light pray, pray for, for us our lady of health whose birth brought joy to those in heaven pray, pray for, for us our lady of health offered up to god soon after birth pray, pray for, for us our lady of health who received sweet name mary pray, pray for, for us our lady of health presented in the temple at the age of 3 years pray, pray for, for us our lady of health who walked foremost in the virginity pray, pray for, for us our lady of health who was model to all while in the temple pray, pray for, for us our lady of health who released the sufferings of the sick pray, pray for, for us our lady of health the unfailing help of those who trust in you pray, pray for, for us our lady of health the heavenly crown of all the saints pray, pray for, for us lamb of god who take away the sins of the world spare us the lord lamb of god who take away the sins of the world graciously hear us the lord lamb of god who take away the sins of the world have mercy on us we fly to your patronage o holy mother of god this fight not our petitions in our necessities but deliver us from all dangers ever glorious and blessed virgin amen Pray for us, O Mary, conceived without original sin. That made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who in your unspeakable providence chose the blessed Virgin Mary to be our own most holy mother, mercifully grant her prayers on our behalf, so that we may enjoy the happiness of heaven for all eternity. Amen. Let us take the page number in the old book, seventy-five. and in the new book 101 to mary a mother of good health o mary, mary a mother, mother of health and a heavenly, heavenly queen seated on your, on your throne of mercy and compassion in your holy shrine at belangani we praise and honor you to be our refuge and our relief numberless are the sick who through you have recovered health relying on your power and goodness We fly, fly to you and implore you to heal our infirmities and, and to obtain for us perfect health of body and soul, that we may better be able to serve you and your divine Son. At all times, you have been the help and consolation of the infirm. You obtain for them health when it is conducive to their salvation. You assist them at the time of their death. Help us then, O most amiable Mother. and attain for us cure from, from all our sufferings of patience to endure the the spirit of resignation agreeable to god's holy will so that all our trials and sufferings may help to purify our souls and help us to detach ourselves from all earthly ties amen prayer to our lady of grace in the page number of old book 85 and in the new book 110 85 in the old book 110 in the new book mary, mary mother, mother of divine, divine grace whom god, god has appointed as the dispenser of his benefits obtain for us and for all those whom we are praying for 
your choices, graces, to the just obtain perseverance, to sinners repentance and pardon, to the sorrowful courage and confidence, to disturb the families peace and concord, and to inform cure and help, to souls in purgatory, solace and deliverance, in fine to each one of us, that particular graces we are now especially praying for from your goodness and your power. Lord Jesus, our mediator, the Father, who had built your mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, to be our mother also, the Mediatrix with you, grant us the favors and graces we are now asking you through her intercession. O Mother of Grace, be our teacher and teach the science of saints through humility, self-denial, purity, silence and suffering, confidence, simplicity, and above all, love and zeal. Teach us especially to love and die in one uninterrupted act of pure and perfect love of God and to be victims of his merciful love. Teach us to grieve truly for our sins, to be perfectly contrite in heart, to patiently bear with our failings, weaknesses, pains, and sorrows. Teach us also to love you very much after God, and one day to be your beloved children in our eternal home. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to beseech the blessings of our Lady of Good Health. O loving Mother, who in death sees your beloved and eternal Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, shower your blessings on your children who are gathered here in this shrine and those who participate in the sacred mysteries through social media and kindly grant their prayers and petitions. O oh, miraculous Mother of Good Health, strengthen the weak hands, make firm the feeble knees, console the broken hearts, wipe away the valley of tears, and lead us to your loving Son, our Savior and our Lord. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you all. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you, Father. Wish you the same. Hymn number 75 on page 28. Mother dearest, mother fairest.
remember a most gracious virgin Mary, that never was as known, that any one who felt her protection, implored her help, and sought her intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgin of virgin, my mother, to thee I come, before thee I stand, simple and sorrowful. O mother of the world incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy, it now us. Amen. Our Lady of Good Health, Well and Kareem, pray, pray for us. Our Lady of Good Health, Well and Kareem, pray, pray for India. Our Lady of Good Health, Well and Kareem, pray, pray for, for the peace, peace of the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and have a nice day.